Artificial intelligence has taken the world by storm over the past few months. With the release of ChatGPT and artificial intelligence image generation, it feels like the world will never be the same. And while this new technology is all inspiring, it's also terrifying. And there's a lot of people who are wondering if this is gonna replace their jobs, including developers. So in this video, I'm gonna answer the question on whether or not AI is gonna replace software developers, particularly blockchain developers, because that's what I focus on this channel, and should you be scared? I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who's worked with this technology on a daily basis for quite some time now and has been using AI tools myself throughout this process. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's talk about whether or not AI is gonna replace developers, particularly blockchain developers now or anytime soon in the future. So, you know, throughout history, we've seen new technology come onto the scene that has replaced other jobs many times before with the industrial revolution. We've seen it with the personal computer, the advent of the internet, smartphones, automation, et cetera, et cetera. But what's unique about artificial intelligence is this is one of the first times that we've seen knowledge workers really scared about this, okay? In the past, it's typically been people who are working manual jobs, but now we got people who use their minds who sit at a desk, particularly developers who are scared of this. And this is a big wake up call for, because for a long time, you know, development has always felt like it's had a big moat around it because you have to be somewhat bright to do it. And this is one of the first times that, that moat feels threatened. But is it actually? Well, let's jump into the facts. So I've been using AI a lot lately to see what it can do and also see how it can increase my own productivity and honestly to see if it reduces my need to hire other developers to do things for me. So I'm gonna give you a realistic assessment of what I'm personally able to do with it right now to help answer some of this question. All right, so let's look at the first example of how I was able to actually use AI to do something beneficial. So when I first looked into it, you know, I was blown away what it could do because it could create simple applications for me. Yeah, I've got an example here on my screen where I basically asked it to create a smart contract for me of a non-fungible token, you know, an NFT, where people can buy the NFT for a price and it would actually send those funds to me. I could specify how many NFTs were in the project and it put out basically the, the right answer. I mean, maybe I would do some slight modifications for this, but I could even ask the AI to make the changes and it would do that for me. So... That was pretty impressive. And honestly, I could see how I could feel threatened by this and how other developers could be threatened by this. But you have to look a little bit farther to see what the actual value here is and what the actual threat is. You know, this is an example of an NFT app, which more or less is a solved problem, okay? Most NFTs start off as templates anyway, and then you can just use some basic customizations to those templates to create a project that, you know, has some real world value to it. And the bottom line is, it's a very simple application, okay? So most projects in the real world are way more sophisticated than this, especially when you're talking about big, complex software systems. There's a huge code base, a ton of nuance, and the AI doesn't really have context for all that other stuff. It doesn't really understand all the user needs that have to happen, okay? So all this is able to do is create a standalone app, a simple app that's in a silo, but it doesn't really know how to implement something new into a much bigger system. And that's most of what actual software developers are doing and their day-to-day -day jobs. So could this capability that I'm showing you right here on my screen actually replace some developers? Well, it could, okay? Developers who build really simple things like prototypes or developers who build things like standalone WordPress websites or landing pages or one-off small projects, it definitely could remove the need for those developers. But the reality is a lot of that stuff's been automated away in the first place. We've got, you know, basic website builders where people don't have to hire developers to do that. And if we do have any customization, a lot of times that work is bid, you know, for pennies on the dollar on freelancing websites like Upwork.com. So with this use case, it can replace a small number of developers that build low value things, but not high value developers who build complex things that need a lot of other context. All right, so that's point one. AI is good for building simple applications, but not necessarily complex applications. So point number two is, I'll give you an example. I asked it to write some scripts for me on how users could send encrypted message with public key cryptography using Ethers.js and, um, you know, MetaMask, for example. And I had to develop this script kind of in an iterative fashion, okay? And as I was going through this, I was like, wow, this is going pretty well, okay? It's doing exactly what I want it to. But as I looked under the surface, it was making mistakes, all right? It was confidently giving me answers that would not actually work when I tried to compile the code or in this case, just run it. And I needed to be a developer in order to understand that, okay? So the point here is that the AI is a language model in this case. It's just giving you code that it thinks is correct, but it can't actually check 
that the code itself is correct. It's not going to compile the code and give it to you. It's not going to run it. Uh, in this case, with an interpreted language like JavaScript that's run on the fly. And that's a real problem, okay? You can't just say, hey, AI, build me this thing if it can't tell you what the right answer is. There's still the need for a developer to check the accuracy of that and then implement it into their code base. So what's what's the value here? Well, this could speed up a developer, all right, especially if you are you know, trying to build something with an unfamiliar language or an unfamiliar library or a concept that you just don't understand yet. The AI could coach you up to speed and maybe give you some starting points. But it's not just going to give you perfect code that you can always rely upon. And therefore, you need a discerning developer who can, you know, change that and actually implement it into a complex project. All right, so that's point number two is that AI basically can make mistakes and can't actually determine the accuracy of its own work. So I mean, actually riffing on that point even more, imagine AI made a mistake and you had to have a human come in and try to fix where that problem is, has introduced a bug into that software system. I mean, you're going to have to basically pay a person to do that. And the AI is not necessarily saving you money in that term. At the end of the day, it's all about saving money in this case. So Let's move on to point three, which is blockchain as a specific field compared to other types of software development, okay? So with blockchain, when you're talking about smart contract development in particular, you're talking about applications that secure millions, if not billions of dollars of funds inside of them on the blockchain. And those contracts, once they're put out there, they cannot change, okay? So that is work that has to be very carefully done as opposed to other types of software development where you're just like pushing something out there and fixing bugs on the fly. Well, you can't exactly just fix a bug on the fly with blockchain. So it's, it's more like being a carpenter where you have to measure twice and cut once. So for this reason, you know, if AI can make mistakes and AI is also not going to be aware of all the security vulnerabilities that are involved with smart contract development, okay? So it might understand some of the well-known security vulnerabilities and be able to check for those. But, you know, we see stories all the time of new security vulnerabilities pop up. I mean, in 2022 alone, we had, you know, billions of dollars taken from smart contract exploits. And so it really takes somebody to be on the cutting edge of what those things are and then internalize those so that we can check for those in new code. And honestly, like AI has to be trained to keep up with that. And as I see it, it's too much of a risk to assume that it's going to be on the cutting edge of recognizing those patterns when it's writing code. So if AI is really about increasing efficiency and productivity, the last thing you want to do is pinch pennies to code out some smart contracts that could, you know, lose millions, if not billions of dollars, just to save a little bit of money and add some productivity. In this case, you want to have a human who's highly involved in that process, a highly specialized person who, of course, also can make mistakes, but you're not just going to delegate everything to a computer. All right, so that's an overview of how I've been using AI and how I've seen its strengths and its weaknesses. So, you know, in summary, basically the AI tools at this moment in time, they cannot create sophisticated enough applications to meet the demands of large scale business applications. It can't check its work to know if it's right or wrong. You still need a developer to do that. And it's not sophisticated enough to write super high stakes code like blockchain. So in summary, does that actually pose a threat to blockchain developers? So my take is it does not presently have a threat for competent blockchain developers at this time, because for everything I showed you, you want a human being in that situation to make sure that things are are actually working and done right. And now you can use AI tools to increase your productivity and how that could affect the market somewhat is that could affect the demand for, you know, basically the bottom rung of developers. So if you're like the worst blockchain developer on the face of the planet and you've shown time and time again that you can't actually improve or don't want to improve, then there could be a threat here. But if you're a new developer, that doesn't necessarily mean that your job is threatened either because, you know, lots of people still want to invest in new developers who can increase their skills over the long term because they want to have somebody who can, you know, do the thing that more of a mid and senior level are going to be doing down the road. And one perspective on this is if we can increase the effectiveness of developers with AI tools or we still want to have developers in those situations, then you have to understand that can actually create more output, okay? And when you create more output, this can be a positive some thing in terms of capitalism. This is counterintuitive for a lot of people to understand. But as, as you can create more output, you have more productivity, you have higher GDP, and that can actually increase the demand for developers because now you're able to create more applications and those can spin off other applications and other use cases and demand for other things. And so this could potentially even increase aggregate demand over time based on this type of revolution. Now, that's how things stand presently. But what about the future? Could things move in the future where we see less demand for developers overall. Well, I do think we see a situation where you know d demand for some types of technical skills goes down, but I still think there's going to be a huge place for developers who understand artificial intelligence can leverage it to continue to be in demand and that those people can, can become even more demand for the positive sum, you know, game that I was talking about here in a minute ago. But, you know, are we going to see just, you know, demand for blockchain developers go away in 2 years? Uh, likelihood is really small in my opinion. Five years, still probably not. In 10 to 15 years, well, any developer who has skills right now should 
basically plan on whatever skills they have today being somewhat obsolete 10 to 15 years anyway. You know, this entire career field is about learning and evolving. And my take is if you're continuing to learn and evolve as this technology goes on in 10 to 15 years time, you're probably going to be just fine. So with that being said, you know, I think AI is a useful tool for developers. It's not going to completely replace developers who are committed to growing and changing with this technology. And so if that's you, then how can you leverage these tools? Well, you can do just like what I was talking about. You can ask it questions. OK, and I'll give you a couple recommendations. Number one is you can use this to learn how to fix your own problems. OK, lots of developers struggle with using Google, especially when they're getting started. They feel like they don't know the right questions to ask a search engine. But you can use AI to kind of get you started. All right, you can explain your problem and it might help point you in the right direction of what you can ask on Google and then you can arrive at your solution faster. And you can also get it to write starter code for you. That's the thing that I'm doing a lot. Like I showed you this NFT contract. Of course, I could write this thing in my sleep. But if I'm working with a new library, OK, maybe I say, hey, how do you do this in this library? Can you show me an example script? And you could use that. You can't always just copy and paste it and assume that's going to work, but you might get close. And those are the two most common ways that I'm using this in my workflow and that you can benefit from this too so that you can learn, evolve, and change this technology over time. And finally, if you want to use this and start you know, creating your own projects, learn the foundational blockchain skills to become a blockchain master, you can have a go to my YouTube homepage, find those free courses there. You know, they're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, go for the throat, build a real world application, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K. I can show you to do that over at adaptiveversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Again, you really don't have to be an expert to start today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I got for today. Make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks for watching Adaptiversity.